Hi everybody, welcome back. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, all right, so we'll just continue with the Platform Developer 1 certification. Uh, and here we go. Given a scenario, use and apply Apex Control Flow Statements. Okay, so first of all, what is an Apex Control Flow Statement? So it's used in multiple programming languages, and it basically utilizes logic and decision-making to control the flow of code. Some examples of this, um, oh, here's a little diagram that kind of shows, you know, regular code is just run from top to bottom. A control flow statement lets us say, hey, at a certain point, I want to apply some logic here. I might not want to go straight down the list. I might want to veer a little bit to the right, or I might want to just enter a loop or something. So it allows you to conditionally control what code is run. Some examples of this is the if else statement, a switch statement, and loops. So these are the three most common control flow statements in Apex. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is if else. So if this Boolean condition is true, then I want you to run this. And if it's not true, then I want you to run this. So here's an example. Um, I'll create a list called my list. It'll hold some strings and I'll hold um, maybe some fruits in there. So I've got melon, strawberry, coconut, and I want to do a if condition. I'm going to check, hey, is the size of this list greater than three? If it is, I want to return a message in the debug log that says you have more than three. And if not, I just want to spit out thank you. A switch is another control flow statement, and it tests whether an expression matches on one of several values. So an example would be, let's say I have an integer, um, and that I've, I've called it i, and when i is 2, then execute this, when i is 3, execute this, and then else, execute something else. So it's a little different use cases than your typical if statement. Next we'll get into loops. So loops are another example of control flow statement, and the first loop we'll talk about is the while loop. So here's an example integer count. I created a integer and it called count and I'm setting it to 1. And while the count is less than 11, I'm going to spit out or just print the current count. And then I'm going to just move the count up one. So it's going to execute um, 10 times. So it's going to go all the way until it hits 11 or 10. Um, it's not going to run at 11 because at this point count is not less than 11. So let's see what an example of the while loop looks like again in the dev console. All right, so here's my code here. Uh, integer count equals one while count is less than 11. System debug count, count plus plus. So I'm just incrementing the count every time. So I'll go ahead and execute it. I'll open it up, filter just by the debug log, and I can see here one through 10. Next, let's discuss the do while loop. All right, so the do while loop is similar syntax to the while loop. The big difference is it executes the first statement. It executes the, the action before entering the loop. So you see here, um, let's say I set the integer count equal to 11 and I say do, print out the count, increment the count by two, and then while the count is less than 11, Go ahead and just keep looping through it. So if you if you notice, this will run even though the count is going to be less than, it is not going to be less than 11 right away. It's just going to execute it anyways. So let me show you uh, as I run this through the developer console. So I'm just going to run this, execute, look at the debug log, and you can see it printed out 11 because in a do while loop, we execute the logic first. All right, so now we're gonna dive into for loops. So you, you probably will run into for loops the most out of any of the loops. And here's what a classical for loop might look like. So you have your for, and then the first statement is you're setting the initial variable value. So you're saying x equals one, the second statement is your exit condition. So when x equals 10, I want to leave this loop. 
And then the third is the action. So we're doing x plus plus. So I'm going to go through this list. x is going to be 1. And I'm going to keep incrementing by 1 until x equals 10. So this is what that does there. And you'll see this used frequently for iterating through collections. So an example is I might have an array called my ints. And I'm going to just create the um, array here. I have it 1 through 10. And rather than declaring it and then defining the exit statement, I'm going to just say I have a integer called i. I'm going to um, iterate through my ints. And every time I'm iterating through here, I'm going to go ahead and print out one of these statements until I get to the end of my array. So let's go ahead and test this out in the dev console. I'm just going to copy, open up my developer console, and let's give this a shot. It's going to hit execute, and then open my debug log. So here you go, 1 through 10. So here I'm using a for loop, but I'm going to iterate through a list of opportunities. So I'm creating a list called opportunity list, and I will just grab a 100 opportunities here using a Sockle statement. And then in my for loop, I'm saying for, and I'm using opportunity as an object, everything that's in opolis, that is the 100 opportunities here, I'm going to just loop through here, uh, assign each of the names to new name, and then I'm going to just update the opportunity. So I'm just iterating through here, assigning the opportunity name to new, new name, and then I'm just doing a DML update at the end. Special points to anyone who can tell me what I'm doing wrong here. I'm making a big Salesforce faux pas here, and special props to anyone in the comment section who could tell me what I'm doing wrong in this statement. All right, that's all I have for control flow statements. Remember, our control flow statements are if else, switch, and loops. Thank you. Have a great day. And remember, if you like the video, please like and subscribe.